welcome to the Review You and the Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. <laughs> We're talking about issue 69. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <yeah. laughs> oh, 69. <laughs> <laughs> Frat boy humor. <laughs> uh, it's a good thing that Seppi's not here. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. only guys thing. Yeah. Also joining us today is Tortera. Honestly, though, I think you should just Silver just put me into the great ball and my suffering now. <laughs> I don't think I want to live in this pinky reality world. Oh come on, who doesn't want to enjoy a good party? Party, party, I party. I'm partying. I mean, I'll be partying today. Oh, wait. When is, will this be uploaded? <laughs> we will be wobbly timey oimey stuff. Just accept that it's not right in time. Okay, well. Party, party, party. On this I day, September 1st, my birthday will be tomorrow on September 2nd. Uh, so I'm going to be partying. <laughs> Yay, party. See, what better way to celebrate a party with a pinky party? Yeah, but not in a whole world filled with pinky's dreams. Oh, party, party, party. You need to have a party. <laughs> I hope you have a party. Or else you're gonna die. <laughs> Yay, with our uh, awesomeness. Uh, so, if you guys haven't guessed what we're doing um, in this episode review, we are going to review the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comic issue 69. Giggity. So, <laughs> <laughs> he said 69. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, anywho, before we head into. The review, um, first impressions are in order. Silver, what do you think? Well, this is a fun issue. I don't know how to describe it. It shows the best of intentions, but take that out of too far and you create disaster. At the same time, this is the first introduction to for me to pencils artwork within a comic. And it's... I'll, I'll talk more as we go into the comic. Mm-hmm. He has a very distinct and crisp style. But sometimes it's also very serious. Yep, yep. And Tara, what about you? Well, I mean, this is like all nightmarish with how it goes throughout beginning to end. But it has a good lesson in the end. Yeah, true that, true that. And as for me, this comic was insane. There's a lesson to be taken here. And I'm sure if I really think hard about it, there I'll kind of figure it out. But I, I forgot. The only distracting thing about this one, personally for me, is that um, the artist, Tony Cusetto? Cus- Cusetto, something like that? Uh, that's it. Cusetto? Cusetto. Maybe, yeah. But anywho, um, the artist here is the artist for the Tumblr blog called Anon's Pie Adventure. And his online handle is Pencils, like Silva mentioned before. And if you guys got no idea who Pencils is, he is a very talented artist. Somehow he did fandom work and now he's part of the crew, which is awesome. Yay. Well, uh, I, I know maybe a little bit of history of how this happened. Oh, really? No. Basically, for the Friends Forever with Twilight Sparkle and Starlight Glimmer, uh, Pencils took two pages out of it. And... Uh, basically redrew the entire thing with all the all these details all this extra stuff so it was kind of an audition and horse news and mlp on 4chan uh they both featured it and i guess somehow it found its way to the idw artists and they gave it a go (laughs) so basically he put in the effort uh to show his his strengths in uh bringing imagery to the comic and i think it impressed idw I think a lot of people wanted to just use it as a aha gotcha against Jay Fosgate, but Pencils deserves respect in his own right for his own work. True that, true that. And Jay Fosgate has this style where it's unique and interesting. And I, I guess IDW likes the style, that's why they hired him. And Pencil has this style where it's unique and bold and serious at times. And each artist has their own styles. And I personally like that. And to say that, oh, this artist is bad, that artist is bad, everybody is a critic and everybody is entitled to their own opinion, no matter how wrong it is. The thing is, they got paid. I- IDW wants that style. So, yeah. Well, there's also the question of, can you finish the comic in time? Can you get the content complete 
all manner of things. And I'm sure there's a lot happening behind the scenes of which we're not aware. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You may never but, know. Mm-hmm. But anywho. We may never, ever know. Tara, what about you? I don't know much about the history. <laughs> no, I mean, what do you think about this comic? First impressions. I thought I already did my first impressions. Really? No. Oh. I don't think you did. Yeah, I said how everything was horrifying throughout the whole comic, but the, there was an important lesson at the end. Oh, yeah. Huh. My my memory okay, is then. shot. <laughs> well, we we got a little sidetracked talking about the history. Yeah, my yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I think I was on. Yeah, you know what? Uh, let's carry on. Let's carry on. <laughs> Anywho, if you guys have not read this comic yet, pause here and go read it. Welcome back. So we start off this comic with our hero, Pinkie Pie, reading a thank you letter from a fan. But said fan is, well, happy for a while, but not forever. Pinkie is not happy with this and decides to make a plan. A blueprint of the almost awesomest party ever. But that's just a plan, so it didn't really go through. Forever. But anywho, many moons later, Applejack calls Twilight to, well, help her with her problem. And said problem is uh, the legendary golden apple, capable of granting wishes to whoever eats it. Is this something similar to Greek mythology? Actually, the golden apples have appeared in several cultures. They're often known as the apples of discord. Ah. All right. I just remember because in Billy and Mandy, there was this chick who has a golden apple and whatnot. There's a goddess of chaos who uses a golden apple to sow dissent between three other goddesses. Mm. Oh, I know that goddess. Basically saying that this should only go to the uh, most beautiful. And they all thought, well, that's me. Then in Norse mythology, there's the, uh, I think it was Freya who's uh, in charge of a golden apple that grants eternal life. But Loki lures her outside of protection by promising an even better golden apple. Oh. Then he turns into a hawk, a hawk and abducts her. What about Kratos? Does he get involved? No, basically he just looks at the apple and cuts it in half <laughs> and then cuts it some more. <laughs> basically, he doesn't even get to enjoy the apple. He just keeps cutting. <laughs> ah, boy! Get over here and try my chopped apple salad, boy! <laughs> the only golden apple I know is the one in Minecraft. Oh, okay. Boy! <laughs> but anywho, carrying on. So Applejack has the legendary golden apple, and there's a problem. Uh, it's not there anymore. And the culprit is Pinky. Uh, she was hungry, and Applejack says, "Oh, uh, we have many apples. Go pick one." And Pinky by had to pick the shiny one. <sighs> so anywho, there's a rundown about whoever eats the apple and wishes on a wish, and it's. Pure of heart? What was the line again? Um, Okay, as long as the intent are pure and their desire are strong enough, uh, the wish will be granted. Yes. Somehow, this is Pinky. She's pure and intent is strong. So, yeah, trouble. First wish she did was make more of them, make the tree bigger and whatnot. So, yeah, that, that's, that's dangerous. It's sort of dangerously pure. Yeah, yeah. And, well... Here's the chaos. Here's, here's the chaos going to happen. So before I carry on, guys, what do you think? Well, it's an interesting uh, case of dangerously pure. Uh, basically, they, they say the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And here's one. She wants a party. It's pure. It's sincere. But it's intrusive. It's basically overriding everyone else's desires. And so I think it's a it's a fun conundrum that makes... Pinky the antagonist without being a villain. Didn't we have this kind of same scenario story with uh, Pinky Cord? What? Okay, one that sounds like a ship and Fluttershy is very upset at you. <laughs> All right, my bad. Step off, he's mine. <laughs> but there, there, Pinky was under the influence of the chaotic dimension. Ah. I'm guessing this is something that happened in an earlier comic. I think so. Yes. Yeah. Did I, it... I don't read the comics a lot. <laughs> Wait, didn't Terra was there? Was, was not there? Oh. You might not have been. Oh, I don't okay. think I was. All right. And Tara, what do you think? Intros. Well, so far, I think it's pretty interesting. I mean, it's just basically Pinky being Pinky, but I'm curious where Applejack even managed to get a golden apple. Like, I guess she won out of the casino or, you know, <laughs> good luck. Who knows? But out of all the apples, she had to go for the shiny one. And I guess she has one golden apple because you don't see any other golden apples, just that one. And then, 
she just makes the apples like gigantic and basically like attempted murder here. <laughs> I guess, I guess. Um, it, it's not it's not that clear what happened here because in the present panel where Applejack says it's not here anymore versus the picture where the tree grew, there's some continuity lack of you know, it's not the same. That's why I noticed. Uh, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Anyway, as our hero uh, goes to find Pinky and stop her, they come across the entrance to Ponyville being Cookie. This court would be proud. Uh, before they could go in, they hear a voice. And said voice is Fluttershy. Fluttershy, at this point, to our heroes, is invisible. Nobody notices her, nobody sees her, until she just goes in front and says, Oh, hi guys. Pinky says that I'm a background character and they want me to put... And then she d- did this to me. Uh, I'm glad I'm not Applejack. Oh, wow. that Norman, that's mean. Also, Invisible S? <laughs> Why not, right? What's better than Invisible? Are you blessed? <laughs> Sorry? Are you blessed with invisibility? <laughs> yeah, why not? What's better than Invisible? Being Invisible S. <laughs> well, what? <laughs> I-, I will say... I don't really like the uh, how they depict Fluttershy's invisibility, mm-hmm. mostly because it's white line work over over a pink body, which doesn't make her look invisible. If anything, that makes her stand out more. If it had just been white line art, yeah, and you have to kind of squint to see her, then I'd understand. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I, I I like that more. I like that more. But eh. I don't know. For me, when I first saw Fluttershy like this, I thought Pinky. Because, like, you know how Fluttershy is sweet. So I thought she made her, like, cotton candy. But then oh. when she said that she'd fit into the background, I'm like, wait, that's the color you're going for? But, you know, I, I think they should get a cue from Susan Storm. That's much better, the depiction of being invisible. Uh, but, oh, well. Um, we carry on with Pinky going to town and, well, making every wish that she thinks is going to be good. Like, there is a couple selling yarn. Yarn, yes, yarn. And she says that, Oh, I I wish your cart was made of yarn. Imagine how happy you would be. Uh, no, no. And basically, she does random wishes. Like, it's pure, but at the same time, too insane. Like, making Rarity's gems shine very bright. Or Octavia's music being heard instead of amplifying it she just puts out musical notes it's just really strange and the road was made of chocolate the clouds are made of balloons and the sun being really really bright and let's just say that it's very chaotic silver what do you think well basically she's trying to decide what would make everyone happy rather than asking and I guess that, too, is a, is a sort of purity. She wants everyone to be happy, but she's not taking the time to ask what they really need versus what she thinks they would need. And that's why this is all uh, going to hell in a handbasket, basically. Mm. But, again, I'm impressed by pencils. When I say that this artwork is very serious, look at the yarn and that, uh, or the, or the, the seller's uh, mane and tail. <laughs> yep. The level of detail is stunning. I mean, the yarn cart as well, the patterns. Pencils went all out on that detail. Dare I say maybe even over detail. Yep, true, true. And also, this is his first project. So it could be one of those things where he's giving one, he's giving it 110%. Indeed, but, you know, it's kind of funny. It's very rare that I can offer the criticism, oh, there's too much detail. <laughs> Usually, my little pony, it's not enough. I, I don't think that's the issue. I, I think that you're mostly concerned because could he keep it up? And in all honesty, I think he can. If Andy Price could do it, he can too. Well, it's not just uh, a question of burnout, though that is a good good factor. Uh, the more detail you add, the more real everything looks and the more serious it becomes. And... Is this a story that we're meant to take seriously? Yes and no. I mean, it's supposed to be visually silly, but it is still a threat. So, yeah, a little, little column A, a little column B. Mm-hmm. And what about you, Tara? What do you think? 
Well, I think she's been hanging around Discord for a while because she's basically making chaos, and Discord would probably approve of this. I know. <laughs> I'm just waiting but, for the background, like, Discord to come out, like, oh, yes, good work, Pinky, good work. Oh, I was kind of expecting Discord to pop out during this comic and be like, oh, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> but it also kind of reminds me of that one episode. I forget the name of the episode, but it's the one where... um. Verity reads that book and then she trying to make everything glamorous and you know she wants to make the whole town beautiful I remember that one inspiration manifestation that's it that's the one it reminds me of that but instead of Verity causing all the trouble around it's Pinky but instead of uh, you know everything trying to be fabulous for everything being beautiful like the way Verity does Pinky wants everyone to be happy by making all these wishes think- thinking that everyone's going to be happy but cl- when clearly they're not and everything is in total chaos yeah that makes sense and yeah as for me pretty insane start the whole scenario here is just crazy and the color and art awesome 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 anyway uh, I'm going to carry on so we see Rainbow Dash flying through the clouds and she noticed something wrong. There's a lot of balloons. So she pops them, but they keep appearing and she's angry and balloons are her mortal enemies now. That didn't take much. <laughs> yeah, really, like she just keeps popping them and it kept, it keeps appearing. So yeah, she's pissed. Uh, the art here is just too, too funny. But anywho, she noticed her friends and goes down to them and ask what's up are you talking about balloons in the sky and they do a round down about how pinky ate the golden apple and now she has magical powers of wishes so we need to stop her and yeah they, they, they plan and they try to go stop before they could find pinky pinky appears and scares the bejesus out of them they sit pinky down and ask her does she know what she's doing and ask her to stop. But before they could ask her to reverse things, she wishes for the biggest party ever. It's just chaotic. This could be proud. There's a lot of things going on here, from a big towering cake to rivers of chocolate to a big giant disco ball crushing a pony's spine. Oh no. But apparently he was right though, because he said that the old fortune teller was right. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, and all the main five are horrified. So, anywho, before we carry on, so, you know, I'm changing. I'm changing gears. Tara, what do you think? Oh, coming at me already, eh? Hey, yeah. <laughs> well, I do like how the Rainbow Dash talks about how the clouds actually have an effect with the sun, and how the clouds are very important. And I also like too how <laughs> balloons are now her, her moral enemy. And I also like, too, how now they're actually calling Twilight just Twilight and not using her full name. Because another thing I didn't point, I forgot to point out at the beginning is when she runs to Applejack and Fluttershy, they call her by her full name, Twilight Sparkle. Oh, uh, yeah, that was something we didn't mention. And I think, I, I, for, personally for me, I want to save it for the end. That's for me. If you want to talk about it, go ahead. Oh, no, that's fine. If you say so, Norman Sanzo. <laughs> what do you think, Torterra 1324? <laughs> Well, Silver Quill, thank you for asking. Oh, boy. <laughs> You're welcome, Torterra1324. <laughs> anyway, uh, Silver, what do you think, man? Well, okay, one, I want to know about this Gypsy Fortune, uh, the old fortune teller. I want to know this fortune teller and see where if she can read my fortune. Yes. I, know. I, know, I love the point's reaction. It's like, this is either amazing or terrible. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, what, Golden golden Top? Carrot Top? Uh, golden Harvest, whatever her name is. Yeah, this is the amazing or terrible. <laughs> so uh, it's fun to see, and but you can see how it's like too much of a good thing, and that's what's do- that's what's doing them in. Yeah, it's just too much of a good thing. And of course, Pinky she comes off as as very naive and innocent. I mean, the funny part is uh, when she says, "I wish I was there right now," and she pops away. Sorry about that. <laughs> I teleported about two blocks away. No, Twilight, don't you find that annoying? How does it feel now? <laughs> She's like, oh, don't turn this around on me. <laughs> oh, boys. But, anywho. Uh, is there anything more? Nope, none for All me. Right. Anywho, um, I'm just going to save my point and carry on. So, anywho, um, Pinky sees the situation and kind of panics for a bit. And, yeah, she she 
just doesn't know what to do. She does all the things to make the ponies happy, but they aren't happy. And, well, uh, Fluttershy basically says this. Uh, what happens when you eat too many cookies? And Pinkie Pie just says, everybody knows that you get sick. And there's this frame where everybody's just looking at her and then it clicks. Oh, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. And mm-hmm. and before Pinkie could wish everything back to normal, the town burns down. What? Oh no. So, right here, right now, the main f- six uh, starts a plan and... Puts out the fire and, well, save the town. Yay, go them. And with that, um, everything goes back to normal. Huzzah! And, yeah. Silver, what do you think? Well, one, I, I love the artwork of the, the Chocolate River, but Golden Harvest in the solid <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> that's the stuff of nightmares. I mean, that's where Pinky's starting to really get get a handle on why this is a bad thing. Uh, love the okay. It took a minute for me to remember that the sun had been amplified, and that's why the cottage caught on fire, and then fell into the chocolate river, and everybody's on fire. Pinky in a bit of a role reversal. Last time she was like, "Every pony, follow my lead." Ah! <laughs> now she's saying, "Don't panic." Well, which is it, Pinky? Consistency, please. But it's a good, good, swift uh, resolution with all the ponies showing uh, different traits. I mean. It's fun to see Rarity and Applejack playing off one another. Rarity's all, I'm not dressed for this. I (laughs) am, but you're always dressed for this. Uh, And And Fluttershy popping back into existence. Where'd you come from? (laughs) We've never seen you before. (laughs) I'm always here. Oh, boy. (laughs) Yeah, and the look that... The the look of that, uh, what, yellow and... Uh, Lemon hearts. uh, Lemon hearts one, but... Lemon hearts. Red and a yellow pony... Whoa, where did she come from? Duh, new adorable pony. <laughs> but anywho, uh, Tara, what about you? Well, I do like how it clicks in that Pinky's like, oh, because there's a few frames where they, he shows a few dots. She then thinks about it like, oh, that's right, too much fun. And then pretty much what we discussed of how um, Carrot Top, I think her name is, the one that's in the chocolate row, basically, mm-hmm. poor, poor thing's about to die. You know, she's suffocating. Then I'll go back to my attempted murder, as <laughs> I mentioned earlier. <laughs> oh, boys. But I do like how, you know, because every time Pinky made a wish, she'd just hop away and be like, there you go, problem solved. At least with this one, she noticed that she was suffocating. She quickly changed it back to liquid again. Yeah, uh-huh. La, 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 la. <laughs> But I also got a bit confused, too, when I just randomly saw the house, the cabin on fire. I'm like, wait, how did it go on fire? But then I read through it again, and I saw the sun in that one frame. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right, because the clouds aren't blocking the way. Yeah, uh-huh. <clears throat> but anywho, um, let's move on to the final. And many moons later, Pinkie Pie throws a party. And, and honestly, this is mostly a sorry party. Uh, and... She just, well, wants to thank everybody for helping. And one thing that Applejack noticed is there's so many balloons. And she asks, uh, you knew how Dash would react to the balloons. So why do you have so many of them? Oh, that's an easy one. I knew the, I knew that popping them would make her happy. And... You get a scene where Rainbow Dash is really hardcore and destroying them balloons. <laughs> and with that, episode ends. Or coming ends. So, Silver, what do you... Th- well, be careful uh, putting that balloon in your mouth, Rainbow. You can accidentally swallow and choke oh, on no. it. Oh, no. That material is very, very... Not to be anywhere near your mouth. <laughs> no. Yep, yep. But I do like that Pinky is, is giving a apology. She, you know, she tr- she tried to help, but... Her, her good intentions got the better of her, and she didn't see what was right in front. It's an easy mistake for anyone to make. I do love Rarity's uh, asking, so is this a party saying you're sorry, or that the party itself is a wretched affair? <laughs> oh my. Scandalous. Scandalous. Although, it's, I think from her expression, Rarity is teasing, but it'd be funny if she was quite literal. <laughs> and Tara, what about you? 
Well, I do like it how they kind of Verity rubs it in, like she's basically being tr uh, trolled or pinky, being like, "So it's a party for yourself," and how you basically almost destroyed everything. <laughs> and she's like, "Yeah, I'm sorry about all that." <laughs> But then it's it's adorable how she gets all these balloons and basically she's like, yeah, I knew that this would make her happy because she hates balloons, so she wants to destroy them all. <laughs> oh, God, no. Oh, boys. And yeah, for me, this ending here is just nice. It's it's just cute and wholesome. And yes, with that, I think we can go to final thoughts. Silver, overall thoughts. I think a big part of this issue is more the debut of Pencil's artwork. The story itself is it's it's fun, it's high energy, but it doesn't offer a lot of new insight or, or lasting impression. It's more just sort of a spectacle piece. And, well, Pencil's high level of detail supports that spectacle. So I think they matched it well, but if you ask me to remember the story, I'd be like, oh yeah, a bunch of stuff happened. <laughs> but the real thing is, look at how it was drawn. And so if whether that's a good or bad is a different sort of a debate. I like Pencil's artwork, but I often find, because of the high level of detail, it's super serious, yo. Why are you not being super serial about this? <laughs> and Tara, what about you? Well, I enjoyed this from the beginning to end, even though this was horrifying to look at with Pinky's chaotic powers. So, thankfully, she's not like Discord, although it would have been hilarious to see him make an appearance. But, you know, a guy can dream. But I do like how the lesson is basically, you know, nothing is always perfect or you can tr I, I guess the lesson is also you know you can try to make the world perfect but it w will never happen like you could be like oh I want this to be a sunny day today and get rid of all the clouds but you know no clouds meaning no shade and everyone's gonna get sunburned or something like that there's always a meaning behind something true that true that and with me uh, this issue was a lot of fun the only thing that pulled me out of it was the beginning I think the first act and that's the writing. The writing is... How do I put this? Questionable at best. Especially... Why, whatever do you mean, Norman Sanso of the MBS show? <laughs> uh, I, I mean that. Literally that. It's like an introduction to the characters. Like, Applejack greets Twilight via her full name. Uh, Twilight Sparkle. Oh boy, am I glad to see you. And... Applejack is Applejack, so I, I can't say much about this because it's kind of her name. There's no shortening it except to AJ, but how many times does the girls do that? A lot or rarely? Any of you guys remember? Not very often. Uh, Twilight, it's often just Twilight. Twi. Yeah. Twilight, get my rope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, like, I think Applejack says Twi. I think you should come down. Like, I, I know Applejack says Twi most of the time. <laughs> But yeah, like, things like that kind of, like, bother me sometimes. And like, Pinkie Pie, like, I think they just say Pinkie most of the time. Yep. Yeah, but at the same time, too, at the, you, you have to really think about who is this comic for? And if a first time is picking it up, would they uh, get the names and whatnot? And those are kind of things that you have to ask yourself. Would this work if I read it? as a new reader and with that in mind yes you have to pronounce their name properly but it makes them sound so weird what do you think Tortera 1324 who is not Sapphire Heart Song of also the MBS show well Silver Quill also known as the Glorified Pigeon or uh, you have a lot of nicknames <laughs> but yeah, I do it's, find it kind of weird because like everyone at this point is yeah, having nicknames like my my friends nickname me Tort or Terra, you know, one of those, or how you know, like you're the glorified pigeon, or someone just call you Silver. I mean, I can't imagine people just calling you Quill because that basically be like Marvel Universe kind of thing. Be like, hey, Quill. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you want to name me Star Lord, I won't stop you. <laughs> Who? Star Lord. Who? Dude. <laughs> ah. Are you joking? Or are you being serious? <laughs> No, that's it's from the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but but anywho, uh, getting back on track, art is awesome. And for okay, this is a bit cheating for me to say, but for Tony's first time drawing in for the comic, it is really awesome. But if you know his history, 
he's been doing this for a while now and he even posted on his Tumblr saying that, yo guys, I can finally say that I am working for IDW. Yay, go me. So it was really awesome for him. Like it, it was one of those things where, yay, fandom guys working for the brand. Yay, much awesomeness. And I think this also goes for Trish, who does most of the art for BronyCon. I think she did a cover for uh, IDW once or twice. So that's cool. Yes, IDW's been pulling, uh, been pulling from the fandom a lot of talent, mm. which is good. Talents, okay, here's the thing. If you have a person who is really good at the thing that you're going to sell, why not ask them to try and do something for you guys, commission them, pay them. They'll be very happy and they will do 110%. So, yay. But anywho, that's all, those are my thoughts. And anywho, um, with that, review ends. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. So anyway, Silver, what are we going to do for next week's episode? Well, I think, speaking of episodes, we need to keep going on the episodes because Season 9 stops for no one. Especially, uh, even spoilers. Okay, no. But we're going to take a trip to the Dragonlands mm. as we learn more about Dragonkind, their culture, and also a couple th- more things about ooh, a certain red dragon ah. with Sweet and Smoky. Sweet and Smoky. This sounds like a recipe. For disaster. It could also sound like a sexual innuendo. What? How? Oh my. Really? Well, Sweet I mean, and smoky? Come on. Yeah. Giggity. <laughs> plus, you know, plus, you know, there's Fluttershy asking Ember, are all these eggs yours? Uh, what? Yeah. No, no, Baka. <laughs> he died. <laughs> oh, boys. <clears throat> Sorry. Ah, uh, yes. With that. Uh, well, that's next week's thing. We, we get to learn more about Ember and her dragon eggs. Oh, wow. Um, no, no, never thought I would say that. So, anywho, yeah. if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at themsshow, and my personal Twitter account is at Roman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me lots of places. Uh, you can find me on YouTube, just do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact. You can also find me on both DeviantArt and Twitter under MLP Silver Quill, with hyphens in between. Uh, you can find me on Equestria Daily, where I post episode follow-ups and editorials and comic reviews, usually on a Wednesday, except for uh, the episode follow-ups are on a Sunday. And you can find me on Patreon and Ko-fi, again, under Silver Quill. All right, all right. And Tara, what about you? Well, they can find me on Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortera1324. Or they can just simply do a Google search on it, and I'll be on all of those. And they can also donate to me on Patreon if they want to, because even the smallest little donation matters. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyWithLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Master Flag, and Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are awesome. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia Vaquil. And I am the Torterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with a... One, three, two, four. Yes, right. I am Torterra one three two four. I should probably say my full name. Oh god, <laughs> that's right, Torterra one three two four. Right, Norman Sanzo of the NBA yes, show, is cor- which is online. <laughs> yes, that is correct, Silver Quill. So, anywho, we'll <laughs> catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the NBA show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. So, Silver Quill, what are you going to do for today? I'm going to be editing. Lots and lots of editing. Ah. That is very interesting. What about you, Torterra1324? Why did you slow down on Torterra? <laughs> because I don't remember random numbers. Really, Norman Sanzo? I thought you would remember Torterra1324 very easily. How dare you, Norman Sanzo? I'm just going to keep saying your name, Norman Sanzo. I am... <laughs> Norman Sanzo. I am sorry. I wish Sapphire Heart Song or Enemy Christie would be here. Yes, it's too bad that Sapphire Heart Song slash Anime Christie could not be here. We will have to mock her later. Uh-huh. Yes, we will totally have to mo- mock Sapphire Heart Song and Anime Christie. Hey, can you <laughs> talk too fast? <laughs> hey, bye-bye.